everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're gonna jump right in and start creating a black and white Zentangle in polymer clay. And so right here, you can tell I've got some tinfoil forms, I'm covering those up, but the other thing I want you to notice here, and I didn't, I forgot to take footage at the beginning, beginning, um, is the background. So I've got this tan light clay, it's all gonna be covered up, but it's one solid piece on my, on my board that's been framed. And I do this so that whenever I put down my Zentangle forms in polymer clay that are three-dimensional, this thing will kind of adhere to it, just overall. Because if I put this down where there's a whole bunch of pieces, ugh, trying to get it to be glued right and correctly eh, might not work so well. It's kind of nice to have one solid piece to back everything. That way then when you do go to glue this whole thing down, the clay mainly adheres to each other when it comes to putting these forms down on that background piece. And this way then, when you do kind of lift it off after it's baked, you can then glue one whole piece instead of a whole ton of little pieces. And this way too, it's like some of them might come off. You're like, oh no, <laughs> I can't remember where this went. Well, this works for that really well. Okay, so now right now I'm bringing in my Kemper cutters and this is my heart form. I do believe I'm also using circle cutters in this particular piece also, but this is a nice way to use those Kemper cutters. I, I love it. When it comes to Zentangling, it's an automatic create, creating my hearts and then I could just lift them up off my surface and place them into my Zentangle piece. It's a really nice way just to have fun with it without thinking about it. You're just creating those little flattened hearts and going for it. Again, I'm making some more teardrops and we're just gonna be creating more and more form as this moves on. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and let my hands talk and I'm gonna keep moving along with this picture. And every once in a while, I'll just go ahead and chime in when there's something I really think is important that you guys might need to know in creating this black and white Zentangle in polymer clay. All right, so here's a little something I want to mention. Notice here I'm using my knitting needles and I'm just kind of poking that down into the clay. I do that for a couple of reasons. One, this way then the ball that's sitting on top of that heart will kind of naturally adhere to the surface a little bit more so I don't have to go back in with super glue and that's kind of nice. Yes, I do get a poked kind of ball and that's kind of a tendency with these patterns. I'm not using just a regular little ball. And so when you do have little balls in the polymer clay on these pictures, yeah, you're gonna have to go probably in unless you pat it down just a little bit to make sure that it really sticks to the clay that it's adhered to. Um, again, right here, I'm just making a little fan folded, almost drapery-like piece. I'm gonna place that into my picture piece and stuff like this, when I get to these big pieces, it really helps, you know, I mean, it makes it go so much faster. <laughs> I mean, if I'm trying to really go through and create a picture and I don't want to take a ton of time on it, eh, having some of these big features in your piece, you know, they take up the space. And for me, I think they're the most fun too.
Okay, so right here, just like I said, I'm bringing in that circle Kemper cutter and I'm just gonna cut a bunch of different pieces. We'll lift some of these off and the tin foil forms that I cover, this is where those cutters really come in handy because you could just place them right over the tin foil form and create all sorts of different designs.
Okay, so here I'm bringing in one of my favorite Zentangle type patterns and really it really is because it fills up some space but it's such a beautiful piece, the finger smear. This is where that particular pattern just absolutely shines. I mean, you know, you really can't use it in many other uh, possibilities like jewelry and stuff, but right here, when it comes to zentangling and polymer clay on this board, it just absolutely shines. And there's so much fun to play with. You know, they, they just kind of work around and they fit right into just any kind of picture I ever create. Okay, so I want to kind of mention here just a little bit that when I started creating this tangle, I started a while back and then it sat on my desk for a while <laughs> and I did not really finish it up. So you're going to kind of see here where I start to put in some other little bits and parts and once in a while the clay will crack and that's because that clay has been sitting there for a while. It has been worked with for a while. So if you're using some really, oh, you know, a cold clay and it's been sitting around for a while, there are parts of it that might have broken off. And you'll see that right in here when I lift up my, my piece. You can see the little break right in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up with some other fresh clay, bring in some balls, go over that area. Or, you know, you could even bring in your needle, uh, you know, my knitting needle here. You know, you could cover it up like that, or maybe you just score it out. You just score that out and that way then that's another whole pattern. So. Don't ever think that just because you might leave something for a while, <laughs> like I did here, no, come back in and just keep creating on it. You'll be surprised at what you find and what you get when it comes to some really fantastic pattern.
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and instead of staying with our white, we're gonna bring in some black and white cane and we're gonna add into this picture piece. I have been wanting to use this cane for a little while now and I thought, you know, it's time. Let's use some of this up, put it into a picture and see what we can do with it. And if you're wondering how to create this particular cane, go check out the Demi video. So the Demi cane video, that's how I went ahead and created this particular cane. Now you'll notice here, I'm kind of lining these up and I'm putting them side by side. And I really thought, okay, let's go ahead and do that and then line them up as part of my background piece. So I'm placing it right over that background. And I was going to do that. And the more I looked at it, I was like, eh, no. And the reason why was, I was going to make it, how, how do I put this? The pieces, like the middle piece, um, didn't have the entire pattern there. I cut my pieces way too thin. So since I did that, I was going to, I thought, well, let's go ahead and overlap them. And if we put them on point this way, then there might be a little bit more interest when you go to look at it. Okay, so I'm putting down some of these pieces on my board and you'll notice here when I lift this up, the clay breaks on me. So that little piece kind of broke off. Well, when that happens, I mean, that clay was cold. So sometimes it's more, you know, it's more susceptible to that. When that happens to me, I'm like going, okay, no big deal. Let's just work with it. So I'll bring in some more of my pattern. I'll slip it under like I've been wanting to do. And then I thought, well, I'll match it up. No, nope, not wanting to match up. So set it side by side. Um, overlap it with some more of that black and white pattern. Don't ever think that it's just like, oh, well, shoot, that's how I really wanted it. Play with it. You might find that you like that break that you accidentally did. It might become one of those really fun, happy accidents. Okay, so here you could tell we filled in a little bit more with some of that demi cane, and then we also added in a few other little finger smears. But what I want to show you right here, we're going to fill this all in and it kind of overlaps. Now, here's where your blade can really come in handy. You could leave it like this, but to me it's too far on the one side. So I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to cut off right where that little hump is area on the background piece, and I'm just going to cut it to form. So I'm going to get my nice corner and it's really nice to be able to do this sort of thing because when I do it, I can define my corner and still have pieces coming off of it. And you get a sense of like, okay, part of this picture is conforming to that background while I have pieces coming off. Uh, it's just a nice way to design and style. Okay, so right here, I'm bringing in the original core cane to the demi cane. Uh, it's just one uh, section, and I'm going to cut that into slices, and I'm going to place that into my Zentangle as well. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is I used, you know, the one that was all done up into one of the patterns, okay, from the demi cane. When you have just like a simple section, you know, that's still left in its original, I want to say, size, so it's much larger, it sometimes breaks up the original pattern you have going on. And that, that was sorely needed here because I've got a nice blanket of pattern going on, but it's kind of mundane. You could kind of see it gets a little mundane. So when I go in and I'm adding in a little larger black and white pattern to this from that original cane, it breaks up that pattern that's going and it gives you something to enjoy. It doesn't become, as I put it in my mind, <laughs> boring. <laughs> so enjoy your demi cane in its different sizes, in single pieces instead of just, you know, complete pattern. 
and move it throughout. You're gonna find that you're gonna enjoy your piece a whole lot more when you do that. And I just wanna say here, you can see I'm placing more and more down towards the white area. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little larger piece, or I should say, you know, the original demi cane, and we're gonna start moving that down into the white area. We don't wanna have just black and white on one side and just all white on the other. It's gonna not seem quite right. You wanna be able to take pieces and move it down into the white area of the pattern and it's gonna look really, really nice. Okay, so for those of you who know how I do, well, when I create these Zen tangles in polymer clay, I like to add in a little bit of metal or chain or that sort of thing. So right here, that's what I'm doing. I'm just adding in this chain and this was just like extra I had had. I picked up at a thrift store and I thought this would be kind of fun to add into the design. Now, when I did this design, I thought, you know, at first when I, put this down I thought oh, it just looks like it's just laying there <laughs> and so the more I added in the more it helped sometimes I wonder when I add in my chain chain you know is this really does this look okay you know I you really have to use your eye and say do I really like the look of that or should I have just left it with just the clay and if you do leave it when you create these tangles with just clay that's just fine. You know, in fact, it might, might have looked better if I would have just left it plain, doing my black and white into my white and just going with the clay alone. But as usual, I can't help myself. <laughs> I love using my chain and other little metal pieces. 
I used some eye pins and some rhinestones to just kind of finish this off. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys continue to watch my hands talk and finish up this black and white Demi Kane Zentangle. Okay, so this is the finished result of my black and white Zen Tangle using my Demi Cane in polymer clay. I hope you'll use this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.